Welcome back to Velshi and Rule. The Trump administration now threatening brand new action on the southern border. Earlier, Secretary Kirsten Nielsen announced the Department of Homeland Security will be deploying more agents to combat the, quote, humanitarian crisis there. Meanwhile, President Trump says he might close the border entirely after an influx of migrants have shown up requesting asylum here in the United States, which we have to remind people is legal. Mm -hmm. They're asylum seekers. Last month, there were more than 100,000 apprehensions and encounters with migrants on the border. That's according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection. And now the president wants to cut off aid to Central America. This is aid typically designed to restore law and order and economic opportunity in countries that are overrun by violence and corruption, which is why a lot of people want to leave them. Here's what his acting chief of staff had to say in defense of that. If we're going to give these countries hundreds of millions of dollars, we would like them to do more. That, uh, Jake, I would respectfully submit to you, is not an unreasonable position. Um, we could prevent a lot of what's happening on the southern border by preventing people from moving into Mexico in the first place. Right, but that's uh, what that's the USAID what, money does, is it, it, is it makes those countries more stable. This is not according to me. This is no, according no, to experts in your own administration. Right, okay, uh, career staffers, but let's talk, about, let's talk about that for a second. If it's working so well, why are the people still coming? But USAID has worked toward making improvements in the Northern Triangle, and the Trump administration's own State Department has the numbers to prove it. The move to end foreign assistance programs for Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala would affect nearly $500 million in 2018 funds and millions more left from the prior fiscal year. The AIDS mission is to, quote, provide investment and partnership from the United States to promote economic opportunity and security for citizens of the region, i.e., make it safer and better so they want to stay and thrive in those countries. The president wants to slash that aid so that the Central American governments will stop the mass migration of refugees. But many critics say that aid actually deters migration and it will help conditions at the border. Even President Trump's own former chief of staff, John Kelly, said it himself. If we can improve the condition, the lot in life of Hondurans, Guatemalans, Central Americans, we can do an awful lot to protect the southwest border. One government report conducted in 2018 suggests that violence in the Northern Triangle was actually beginning to show signs of improvement, particularly in El Salvador and Honduras, which both observed dramatic declines in national homicide rates during 2017. That fiscal year saw a total aid package of $655 million. The impact of that investment in agriculture and in Honduras alone helped lift 680 thousand people out of extreme poverty during that same year. Funds sent to Guatemala boosted agricultural programming as well, which helped increase rural farmer sales by more than 50 percent. You know how many jobs it created? 20,000. Now let's go to El Salvador. 40 percent of aid focused on citizen security and rule of law. On top of that, the funding gave 33,000 households access to electricity and put Listen to me here. 2,250 girls in school. Ali, that is not charity. That is not goodwill. No, it's, it's, it's just a economic policy, issue. right? It's, it's, it's smart policy. Joining us now is uh, Hans Nichols of the White House, NBC News, National Security and Justice reporter Julia Ainsley as well. Uh, Hans, let's just put the, this in perspective. Folks work in these countries for very little. Generally speaking, the, uh, a good wage is $10 a day. There is risk from drug gangs. There's risk of sexual assault. They end up coming to America where they can work as agricultural workers for 100 or $150 a day. The only way to change that is to change the economics of that, to make it safer for them to stay where they can earn more. And that's been, uh, that's been standard policy from administrations, bipartisan administrations, going back dozens of years. You can even hear it in the president's own rhetoric when he talks about how his own successful economy has drawn all these people here. It's a tacit admission that the economy in those countries isn't very good. I think what's clear today, where what, midday on Monday, is it's clear that President Donald Trump wants the focus this week to be on the border. He'll be visiting later this week. What isn't clear is whether or not he is serious about shutting it down, about sealing the border, whether or not he's bluffing like he has in the past, or whether or not he's actually planning for it. And you can make a case on both sides of the letter, a ledger. On the planning side, Patrick Shanahan, the acting defense secretary, was asked about it earlier today. He said, well, not yet. 
Not yet are U.S. troops down there sealing the border, but he added, but he hasn't spoken to Kirsten Nielsen yet, and he, he plans to later in the day. And then on this sort of idea that what it would do to the economy, and they haven't fully thought it through here, over at the Council of Economic Advisors, it's clear that they haven't costed this all out about what it would cost the economy if you shut down the border. And for a president that touts the economy, touts the stock market, looks at various indices all the time, it's pretty clear that shutting down that border would have an economic impact. And that would be a difficult case for him to make that his presidency is going to be tied up in these sort of uh, sort of economic going, especially heading into the reelection, what it would do to the economy. Guys? Shut down the border, kick them out, give them no aid, not our problem. Those are things we hear the president say on the podium at rallies all the time. But Julia, take us local. You have spent a ton of time on the border. When I was there, I actually spoke to the mayor of McAllen, Texas, about, let's call it the immigrant crisis. And here's what he said. When President Trump presented the idea of the border wall, how did that sit with you in this community? Well, I think, you know, just the border wall itself, uh, we have uh, problems with that for landowner rights, for park, splitting parks in half and all those things. And, and I don't think it affected our relationship with Mexico until he said they're going to pay for it. And then we had a backlash, not only uh, worried about what the wall is going to do to our communities, but, uh, you know, resentment in Mexico affecting our visitors and tourism. We're very strong on tourism, and that had a negative effect on our economy. Economy, of course. So he's talking specifically about the negative effect on the economy. He went on to say, if we've got money to spend on a wall, spend it on aid to these countries. When aid to those countries went down, that's when crime and violence went up. That's right, Stephanie. I mean, for people on the border, the immigration issue is very nuanced. They get a lot of their commerce for people coming from Mexico every day to go to school, to work, to use their businesses. And this commerce goes back and forth all day long. So to shut those down would really hamper these towns more so, you could argue, than the immigrants who are coming into these towns now. As we know, immigration is really a matter of push and pull factors. And I'm glad you referenced General Kelly because when he came in as Secretary of Homeland Security, he talked all about how they wanted to do more to invest in Central America, to drive down what they call the push factors, the violence, the poverty, the reasons people leave. Instead, what we've seen is they are focusing more on the pull factors. They think these are reasons why people come here to exploit our immigration loopholes, and they want to crack down on people seeking asylum. So that surge we're seeing at the border today, there's 750 Customs and Border Protection agents. Those people are going there to make it harder for asylum seekers. Secretary Secretary Nielsen says they will be expanding their policy where they turn back asylum seekers and have them wait in Mexico. Again, they're not from Mexico. The majority of them are Central American families and have them wait in these towns until they can come to the United States to have their asylum hearing. So right now, that's a practical thing we're seeing. It's expanding. She wants hundreds more to be turned around in a day. As far as sealing off the border, people who will be involved with the operational part of that say that they have no plans to do that at this point, but that they reserve the right to shut down parts of the border for short periods of time. We did see some of that right around the time that the Honduran migrant caravan came to Tijuana, and that did have an effect. People were worried about being able to do business. All right, Hans, um, we know that the aid can help those uh, Central American uh, countries in the way that we've laid out. There is an argument that aid gets funneled to corrupt leaders uh, or it legitimizes gangs and that we keep giving money and things don't get better. Look, there's no consensus in the development community on how you alleviate poverty in the developing world. That's why we've been at it for, for some time. Just a few blocks down from here, there's the World Bank. They spent a lot of time and effort on trying to having some sort of projects and some sort of programs to build and lift these economies up. What well, the consensus has been, at least on Republican administrations, is you need to do more trade. You need to have more commerce, and that's the way to really ensure that these economies are sustainable and vibrant. What there isn't a lot of talk about is just suddenly pulling out the rug, having programs that are in place there on counter narcotics, things that your own administration, your own vice president has advocated for and saying they simply aren't working. Let's pull it now. The Mick Mulvaney argument that he made there is not something that really is relevant or appropriate for this conversation. I mean, he can make the argument that aid doesn't work, right? And that's been out there. But to try to tie it in so abruptly to what's happening here, it doesn't seem to be entirely 
entirely consistent. Guys? And, and we do have to remind our audience, one of the reasons you see this surge from people um, <clears throat> in these caravans is because they fear the border will be closed, Correct. that the wall will be built, right. that we're going to allow less and less asylum seekers. Right. So, so many are coming on now. the heels of the president calling, for, calling it a national Correct. emergency. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.